They are inextricably bound by an encounter they never had. When I had flashbacks, it was Stephen Avery's face I saw in my flashbacks. When I saw his picture on TV, the hair on my arms and the back of my neck would stand up. I truly believed he was the man who assaulted me. 18 years after a jury sent Stephen Avery to prison on the force of her identification, DNA determined she'd blamed the wrong man. It was my worst nightmare. I wasn't going to wake up from this one. It was real. That day was much harder than the day I was assaulted. In her first television interview, the woman at the center of the Avery case recounts the nightmare that began 19 years ago. It was a sunny summer afternoon. She was jogging the shoreline in two rivers when a man came out of the dunes and grabbed her. He said, we're going to take a little walk up into the sand. When she resisted him, he broke her nose. When she refused his sexual demands, he choked her. When she kicked him, he told her she would die. Now I'm going to kill you. Now you're going to die. And he became, he began alternately um, beating me and strangling me. When she came to, he was gone. Soon, police had a suspect. They asked her to pick a picture out of a lineup. She chose Stephen Avery. I am the woman who sat in court and pointed to Mr. Avery and said, this is the individual who assaulted me. Um, and nothing can change that fact. Do you think about having to look at Stephen Avery in the eye and what you would say to him? I think about it all the time. Just days after our interview, she had that chance. Some days, you know, you think what she said back then, you know, and it gets me a little angry, but otherwise, it don't bother me. They met privately before her appearance before a task force that bears his name. Lawmakers formed the Stephen Avery Task Force to prevent other wrongful convictions. On this day, Avery and his accuser took their first steps toward peace. She said she was sorry, so that was a start. Avery is a man of few words, but says he doesn't hold a grudge. I'm not trying to put that all past me, so I'm trying to think of good stuff now. That's about it, so easier on me, probably easier on her then. So she went through a rough time too, so. Avery listened in tears as his one-time accuser told the task force how she'd picked the wrong man. I will always be known as the woman who wrongfully accused Steve Avery of being my assailant. Her mistake was inadvertent, but an earlier 12 News investigation revealed police knew of another suspect, a prowler, peeper, and stalker who'd grabbed another woman on the very same beach. His name was Gregory Allen, but investigators never included his picture in the lineups they showed the victim. I was never given that choice. Steve Avery has paid with years of his life. Allen is now serving prison time for a sexual assault in Green Bay 10 years after the woman's attack. She not only feels responsible for blaming Avery, but for letting Allen get away to attack again. Not a day goes by that I don't also think about the woman from Green Bay who was brutally, brutally assaulted in 1995 and how different her life would be if the right person had been incarcerated in 1985. But for all her guilt, she knows she didn't make this mistake alone. So she told the task force she wants to help fix the system that failed Stephen Avery. Mr. Avery at one point said, it's too late for me. Maybe someone else can be helped. And that's the important thing. Bound by a shared history and shared hurt, she, like Stephen Avery, is struggling to make sense of a senseless mistake. He commented about how there's some days when he feels it would be easier to be back in prison. And while his loss was certainly much more significant than my own. There are days when, or nights when I go to bed and feel like, you know, it would be a blessing if I didn't wake up in the morning. But with unwavering support from family and unexpected support from strangers, she's working toward earning forgiveness. And that is my hope for Stephen Avery and his